In this demo, I will show you a Jenkins pipeline with the Node.js example with Docker. I will first show you the code and I will then show you how to use it in Jenkins. So this is again the Docker demo repository where we have our index.js, our Node.js application that gives us a hello world. So what is the idea of this Jenkins pipeline. The idea is that we only have one repository with our project and in this project we have a pipeline file, often called Jenkins file. And that Jenkins file will then have the steps, the pipeline steps to build this project in Jenkins. So then you only need one project, one Git repository, that will have the code of your project and also the code to build your project. So this is what we want to build. We want to build the Node.js project with Docker. So here's our Docker file. This is our node image that we want to build together with this application. And then we want to start it. Typically, you put a Jenkins file in the root of your project. So it will, there will also be a Jenkins file right here in this folder, or you can put it somewhere else. For this purpose, I put it here in miscellaneous and then Jenkins file. So this is the Jenkins file that is necessary to build our Node.js project and that is going to package it in Docker and publish it to Docker Hub. So let's go over the details. We're going to have three stages. So we're going to have a preparation stage, a test stage, and a stage that's called Docker build and push. Could be four stages, but I just put them together here. This project can be built on any node. It just says node, nothing else. Just it can be built on any node. And we're also going to have a variable commit ID. We're going to figure out the commit ID because Jenkins doesn't expose it by default in Jenkins pipelines. Let's go over what we're going to do in preparation. First, we're going to do check out SEM. It's going to do a git clone of this Docker demo in Jenkins. So then we have all the files available and we can start building our project. So now that we have this repository available, we're going to run this command using a shell. We're going to run git ref parse minus minus short of the head. And this is going to give us the commit ID. And this commit ID, using this greater than sign, we're going to put in a file. The file is called .git slash commit ID. It's just a temporary file where we're going to store this commit ID. It's the SHA, it's a unique ID. We are going to use it later on to tag our image, just as we did earlier. So then we're going to say this commit ID, this this variable that we have defined here, commit ID equals, now read this temporary file and trim, trim any spaces or returns from it. So that it's just a string characters of this commit ID. Then in the next stage, we are going to run npm install, only the development packages and npm test. So let me show you what that does. NPM install only dev is going to install the development packages. So let's have a look in package.json. The development packages is going to be Mocha. So we're going to install Mocha first, and that is what is needed to test our package. So we have, we use NPM install only dev. It's going to install Mocha, and then we're going to run NPM test. NPM test is going to run the executable mocha, which is then going to execute this test.js script. This test.js really does nothing. It's just an example script that it will always succeed. But typically what you put here is a test that will test your code. For the purpose of this course, this will always just succeed. So this is going to run the test. We will see that happening later on in Jenkins. And to make sure that we can run npm, we're going to wrap this node.js. So we're going to say the node.js installation name is node.js. We have a tool in our Jenkins, node.js, which is installed. Only when using this node.js, 
we can use the npm command. Otherwise, it will just say npm not found. So that concludes the test stage. And then we have a Docker build and push stage. And in this Docker build and push stage, we're going to say, we want to do something in Docker with a registry. And the registry is going to be the standard registry index Docker IO, which refers to the Docker hub. And we're going to log in with the credentials with ID Docker hub. So if you go back to our dashboard credentials, this ID here, Docker hub, this is going to give us the login and password. So using this credential, we can actually log in to Docker hub. So this is the credential name, the ID of the credential. This is the host of the registry. It just refers to Docker hub. And then we're going to say then build my Docker application. And I want to tag it with the name, my name, and then my repository, Docker not just demo, and then the commit ID. And I want to build the current path. That's where the Docker file is. And after the build is done, so first the build, then I want to push this. So it's going to build, it's going to execute the Docker file. It's going to build a Docker image based on the Docker file. And you're going to have an image and that image is going to then be pushed to this registry using this credential. And it will be the end. Then our job is finished. Let's do that in Jenkins. So let's create a new item. And you see now I'm actually doing this manually. So if I want to create a pipeline, just like that, I'm again, so this is a pipeline type. So I'm now in the UI creating a pipeline. Ideally, you want to avoid this as well. So you want to have a job DSL that creates this for you, or you want another method that this maybe is going to go automatically. Otherwise, for every project that you have, you will have to manually input it still in Jenkins, like I'm doing now. If you only have a few projects, that can be fine for you. If you have a lot of jobs that you want to run, you have a lot of projects, a lot of repositories, then you might be looking into some automation. I'm going to give it a name. So this is Node.js Docker Pipeline. I'm going to call it Pipeline Project. And I'm going to say OK. And here I really need only one thing. I'm just going to say I want a pipeline script from SEM. The SEM is going to be Git. I'm just going to copy paste this URL here. So this is going to be Docker demo Git. I'm going to build a master branch and my Jenkins file is in this folder. So if you put the Jenkins file just in the root folder, then you don't have to put this. I press save. I press build now. And I'm going to open the console. Let me start from the top. Here you see the git command to get the commit ID, npm install, dev dependencies, npm test, it runs mocha. One test is passing. And because this test passed, we're now going to build Docker. We're going to do a Docker build minus T to tag it. These are git ID, we're going to build the current directory. And then we have the steps, the six steps of the Docker file, we tagged it, and then we run the Docker push. This is going to push our app to Docker Hub, and then it's finished. So you can now really nicely see the stages here. So we first had preparation stage, took a little bit less than a second, a test stage that took two seconds, and then the Docker build and push that took six seconds. When you execute it again, you will see that sometimes Things will get cached, it will go a lot quicker. Tests will often take the same time, but over time you will see the more tests you write, the longer it takes. But then depending on how many stages you have, it is actually quite interesting to see what is, what is taking so long in your job, especially if you want to optimize things. If you have a lot of tests running, what takes a longer time, what takes less time, how do you optimize this? So this is an example of the Jenkins pipeline where we are using Node.js and a Docker build and push. The great thing about these pipelines is that you bundle this together with your repository. So you can really nicely maintain 
your code here and in Jenkins you're really not supposed to configure much anymore. Everything should be nicely maintained here in this Jenkins file. It also allows the developers to make changes. So if you are a Jenkins administrator, you might be putting this in someone's Jenkins directory, but then a developer will quickly see that oh, this is how I can configure my build flags and then he can self-service his own Jenkins builds. He can make the changes himself or the whole development team can make the changes himself. And this is where the power comes from, I think, from the Jenkins pipelines. It removes a lot of burden from the Jenkins administrator or the sysops, the devops in a company, and it allows the developers to take really take ownership of their jobs, collaborate, have a history, an audit log, be able to see the changes and treat everything as code. You can even use pull request if you're familiar with pull request to make changes to your build parameters. In the next lectures, I will go a little bit deeper in some details and about notifications, closing the feedback loop and so on. So this concludes this demo.